Hi there, and welcome to the first of a two-part video about ways to use Catchit by ESMA in your social learning groups. It is a fabulous YouTube video, beautiful story, cute characters, little meerkats. You know how adorable meerkats are. Who doesn't like a meerkat? Love this fruit that's hanging on a tree, and they are waiting for it to ripen perfectly. Of course, the ugliest vulture you've ever seen swoops in and takes it. Now, meerkats, being a little on the mild and meek side, their first reaction is, oh no, they're sad, it's gone. But then the little guy in the back, yeah! And they take off after this vulture. It is a fabulous, funny story. Kids will love it, you will love it. And we can do a lot with it because there's excellent feelings in it. And you know that I'm going to be talking about some feeling activities that you can use. Again, we often want students relating and looking and thinking about what is happening with these characters. And so we can have students list comfortable and uncomfortable feelings. Since there's two groups of characters, the vulture is a character and then the group of meerkats are another character, you can look at either one or both at the same time, different times, depending again on the level of group that you're working with. I love asking students to draw what they liked in a YouTube video. And at the end of this story, I'm going to give a little bit of it away because this student wanted to illustrate that the vulture was resilient. What a great word for our students to understand and to be using. And in fact, yes, the vulture does a face plant on a cliff. Does that stop him? Absolutely not. And so it's a great way to introduce this super important concept to our students so they start thinking about what does it mean to be resilient? Boy, horrible things happened to this vulture and to the meerkats, but they didn't give up. They kept on going. And so we can really ask students to talk about feelings and thoughts, how they go together. All kinds of fabulous discussions can happen once you've watched this YouTube video. After the YouTube video watching, though, often we want a different activity in group. And historically, in lots of speech and language therapy groups, there's game playing. And I think game playing is a wonderful time to practice using game fixers. Again, I have it as a visual, these thought bubbles that we want students really integrating, really internalizing, so that they can start to feel okay when things don't go great for them. Games are great to do that with. I also often use feeling trackers, and so I, I track four different emotions. Happy, which is self-explanatory, and then sad, mad, and worried. Because if we're playing a game, we might feel sad that we're behind, we might feel mad that we got sent back, or that someone else is ahead of us, or we might even feel worried because we're in the lead, but people might catch up. So lots of different things to do, ways to integrate feelings into your game playing. Look for the second part of this video. It'll have some more ideas. Enjoy Catch It by Esma. I'm Anna Vegan. Happy viewing.